Dr. Tracy Kennedy. Dr. Tracy Kennedy is an empath, a psychic medium, Reiki master, registered yoga teacher, published author, and public speaker. She provides insight and guidance using her empathic abilities, and for many years has been reaching out and teaching empaths how to use their gifts and abilities. Tracy is here tonight to discuss her book. Oops, sorry. Really good. There's no alcohol in the book. It was hot it's chocolate. It's energy, I know. It's your knocking me, but i So Tracy is here tonight to discuss her book currently being published. Hashtag, I feel you, living as an empath. Please welcome Tracy. So, hello and welcome. Um, too close? Is that right? Okay. So, I'm an empath, and I, I think a lot of people here are. I don't have to go into too much detail about what it is, um, other than to say we feel everything. Okay? That spectrum of experience where we feel other people's emotions and feelings as if they are our own. Okay? Um, but what I want to talk about broadly is what the book is about, what it means to be an empath, the different types of things that we can feel and experience, and I don't think that many empaths realize the potential of being able to feel everything, right? So not just, not just, you know, person to person, but thinking about objects, places, spaces, buildings, land, everything and anything. Okay. So for some empaths that can, uh, you know, are on that spectrum of experience where they feel everything, it can be pretty heavy, right? Feeling everything around you. So I talk about what it means to be an empath, the kinds of things that we experience. Um, but I also talk about how to manage all of this, right? So how do we manage our own feelings and emotions? Where do some of our emotions and feelings stem from? So I offer a lot of um, journaling, journaling questions, dialoguing with the self about where some of your emotional imprints come from. And I always laugh when I say imprints, and I'm going to look at Mary Beth because we talk about this in puppy training. <laughs> the imprints that we give, you know, uh, young puppies so that they uh, grow up psychologically well, right? It's the same for us. We have those imprints um, about what, how we can feel when to feel and all that stuff. So I try to guide you through um, some reflective exercises in that way in every chapter. And how do you how do you manage how do you navigate you know all of the uh, all of the energy experiences around you? But the cool thing is so the insights. What can you do with this this cool ability, right? The superpower. And I'm going to call it a superpower, especially in a time when the world out there is very Unfeeling, I think, is the best way to put it, right? A lot of black and white, no gray. Everybody's kind of busy. And um, we are the healers. Empaths are the ones that are going to um, incite a lot of the change that's happening. Somebody mentioned consciousness raising and all of us getting together and kind of leveling up together, absolutely. And um, so, yeah. Once you understand the root of your own emotions, you can start to understand the way that you experience other people's emotions and feelings. But once you know what's yours and what's not yours, then kind of coming from this space, starting to live a life that is more about you and your passions. Because I don't think a lot of people realize how you can lose yourself um, with this gift and ability, whether it's in a relationship. I'm sure many people here can say, I remember I was in this relationship and I lost myself. I lost my identity. I didn't know who I was at the end of it. It's because you're an empath. You, you start to live your life through the feelings and emotions of other people. So um, we want to live our own life, right? Our own authentic, true self, as everybody's been talking about. So what's inspired me? I have to say my clients definitely have inspired me. You know, I offer insight. I offer personal experiences. And the appreciation, the feedback, kind of keeps me going, okay? And, and sure, the ego is kind of like, oh, good, I'm doing it right. But the, the bigger picture of I'm making a difference, you know, I'm kind of doing something with that. 
it's not really within my comfort zone to talk about myself very much. And it is something that I do in the book, sharing my experiences and different perspectives. So I'm inspired to push past my comfort zone and talk more about um, the things that have happened to me in my life and then teaching from those insights and experience in addition to what I've learned from my clients. So, um, I am going to read you an excerpt from my book, Hashtag I Feel You, Living as an Empath. Um, when I started writing this, I was getting crazy downloads, as some people might understand, and next thing I know I have three books, right? So I'm kind of, I had a moment of, oh my god, I'm bottom nose, I don't know what, I don't, I don't know, this is too much. <laughs> And then realizing, okay, I have a, I have a series of books here, so I'm, I'm excited about it. The first one um, that I'll be talking about tonight, as I said, is kind of the basics, the empath basics. So this is um, from part three, chapter seven, finding your light, prioritizing and committing to yourself. And I do have a copy of this chapter, oh, here, I've, been, I've got a pretty little, look at these things from the dollar store, they're pretty little folder, and the chapter is in there. And I'm asking for a $5 donation just to cover the copying and uh, whatever. So if that, if it, if it hooks you, then, all right. Okay, here it is. If someone were to ask you, how do you take care of yourself? What kinds of things do you do for your self-care? How would you respond? What do you do for yourself when you realize that you're overwhelmed and stressed? How would you answer these questions? In the fall of 2017, my spiritual self-care was an impromptu series of meditations, focused breathings, focused breathing, I'm so breathing, and journaling throughout the day. And that seemed to work very well for a time because I was doing it consistently every day. The daily obligations began to increase and creep into the cracks and crevices that had been previously filled with this personal time. Then one day there was no time left and I felt some resentment at myself and the scenario that I had created around me. If I wanted to continue to do my spiritual work in whatever shape or form that may be, in the best way possible, I knew I needed to nourish my spirit and take care of myself, that's two separate words, my and self with capital S, S two, without feeling guilty, self-absorbed, and self-centered, but instead feeling self-respect, self-honor, and self-love. Under the gentle prompting, and I always giggle when I say that, and direction of my, my yoga teacher, my yoga mentor, um, during the first week of our yoga, te yoga teacher training, we were encouraged to carve out 10 to 15 minutes each morning and create a sp spiritual practice for ourselves. Sadhana, as it's called in Sanskrit. 10 minutes doesn't seem like a lot, except when it is. Trying to commit to that 10 minutes really showed me how my own self-care was not a priority. Everything else seemed to trump my time when it came down to it. I decided to firmly commit to a 5 a.m. wake up and begin my spiritual practice. As an early riser, it made sense to me. And it was also an incredibly quiet time in the house, in the neighborhood, everybody sleeping, energetically quiet, right? Great time for empaths. However, I had some obstacles, mostly in my mind and of the mind. So I would come downstairs at 5 a.m. to the kitchen prepare my coffee as always with full intentions of beginning my morning routine which is always done with coffee okay but you can make tea or hot water with lemon of course but I see the kids have left the dishes all over the kitchen counter so I clean that up quickly <laughs> last night's emails catch my attention as I'm cueing my relaxing music and that should really be attended to right away so I respond to some emails then I see and smell that the garbage needs to go out so I do that too then I do this, and I have to take care of all of this right at that moment. This, that, and everything else. The next thing I know, I've lost my time for me and my precious spiritual practice. Because now it's time to begin the day with the regular routines and appointments and schedules. I was frustrated. I wanted to go beyond scrounging for small pockets of time for myself that I could fill with meditation, journaling, yoga, simply being. I deserve more time for me. I came to realize that if I do not set some boundaries with myself, myself will never get the attention that it deserves. And I needed to be a bit stubborn and perhaps a bit militant with myself, which was a struggle from the go with the flow spiritual routine, right, to a strict schedule, a spiritual discipline. 
And so one morning, I began my day in the same manner, turning the kettle on, lighting my candle, starting my music, prepping my yoga mat. I quietly prepared my coffee with full focus and presence. In the periphery, I see much the same as usual. The dishes, mislaid clothing items, a takeout container. I let the images skate by. I take my coffee. I enter into my space, stepping into my, onto my mat, and I begin my spiritual practice. Since that time, I still do the same thing every morning. I do not let anything in that special morning time derail me from my time with self. It doesn't matter if there's dishes, dishes piled to the ceiling, or my inbox is overflowing, or whether the garbage needs to be taken out or not. It can wait, except for the cats. Feed the cats as soon as you wake up, because if you do not, they are relentless. <laughs> this time is a time that allows me to check in with myself, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, to center and ground myself, to set intentions, to be inspired, and to create a life of joy, love, and purpose. Doing a spiritual practice every morning has given me clarity, focus, and deep connection, which affects all aspects of my life in a positive manner. Whatever we are here to do in this life requires full presence. Whether you want to teach yoga to the world, or you want to focus your energy for healing, or to enhance your psychic mediumship abilities, or to finally understand what your path and purpose is. All of these goals require us to calm the analytical thinking, to understand oneself from within, to take care of and to honor the physical body, and to connect to and respect to our emotions and feelings. Know thyself, love thyself. And so I, I put that call out to each and every one of you to fully commit to yourself, committing to your, your inside self, your spiritual practice, so that you can gain some clarity in your own life. Okay, just to kind of, you gotta find you. <laughs> You're not gonna find you out there. Everybody's talked about that tonight. We gotta go with it, all right? And I'm gonna leave it at that. So thank you.